if you're like me, you probably heard the news recently about Google stepping back from publishing device trees for its Pixel phones. For a lot of us in the custom Android ROM development scene, that sounded like a bit of a gut punch. It raised questions about the future of open source Android development, especially for the devices many of us love. But here's the thing. Custom Android ROMs are far from dead. In fact, while Google might be shifting its focus, there are some incredible Android phone manufacturers out there that are still fighting for the open source cause, providing the essential tools and resources that we need to build and flash custom operating systems. And today, we're going to be shining a spotlight on these unsung heroes. So let's dive in. Now, you may be asking yourself, what's the big deal with device trees? For those of you who might not be deep into the custom ROM world, a device tree is essentially a blueprint. It tells the Android open source project, aka AOSP, how to talk to all of the unique hardware components inside your phone, including the camera, the screen, the fingerprint sensor, everything. Without it, building a custom version of Android that actually works on a specific phone is incredibly difficult and often impossible. Google's decision for Pixels makes it harder for the community to develop and maintain alternative ROMs for their flagship phones. But thankfully, not every company is taking this route, and some are going above and beyond. First up, we have a company that has truly proven its dedication to the open source community for years, and that's Sony. They run what's called the Open Devices Program, and it is a haven for AOSP developers. Through their dedicated developer portal, Sony provides everything you could ask for, including comprehensive build guides that show you step-by-step -step instructions on setting up your build environment and compiling AOSP for a huge range of Xperia phones. They also provide the public device trees and kernel sources as they're right there on GitHub, easy to access and fork for yourselves. And this is absolutely crucial for building those custom ROMs. They also work on software binaries. And again, this is a big one, as these are the proprietary files needed for things like your camera or your Wi-Fi to actually fully work. Sony provides them for download, which simplifies the process immensely. They are also incredibly active with the community, as they don't just put the code out there and then forget it. Sony actively maintains these repositories and even encourage contributions from the community. This kind of well-structured and official support program makes Sony a top choice for anyone serious about building a reliable and transparent custom ROM experience. They are truly leading the charge. Next, we have a company whose entire philosophy revolves around transparency, ethics, and longevity, and that's Fairphone. For them, open source software isn't just a side project. It's a fundamental aspect of their mission. Fairphone provides extensive resources through their Fairphone code website, including publicly available source code as they publish the kernel and device specific configurations for all of their devices. They also include the binary blobs as this is relatively uncommon, but Fairphone goes the extra mile by providing access to those necessary proprietary binary files. And this massively simplifies getting a fully functional custom ROM up and running. 
they also have a commitment to longevity. By giving us these resources, Fairphone directly empowers the community to keep their devices updated and maintained long after official support might end. And this is huge for sustainability and getting the most out of your hardware. And while some source code from their manufacturing partners might have limitation, Fairphone actively works to provide integration source trees that are fully buildable. It truly shows a deep commitment to user control and transparency. Now, OnePlus has historically been a very popular choice within the developer community, and for good reason. The company still maintains a presence on GitHub, where they release kernel sources for their devices that are often tied to specific versions of Oxygen OS. And this is essential for developers to build custom kernels and ROMs for these phones and tablets. However, it's a bit of a different story compared to Sony's centralized open devices program because with OnePlus, finding a complete and official device tree for a specific model can sometimes mean navigating through various community maintained repositories. And while OnePlus provides those essential kernel sources, getting a fully buildable AOSP environment might rely more on the incredible efforts from the independent development community rather than a direct all-in-one official package from OnePlus. So while OnePlus is still providing their kernel sources and they are still active on GitHub, they aren't providing the full device trees like we see from Sony and Fairphone. So, while Google's recent policy change regarding pixel device trees presents a new challenge for some, the spirit of custom Android ROM development is alive and well. Developers and open source advocates still have excellent, highly supported alternatives. Sony and Fairphone in particular have truly established themselves as exemplary supporters of the open source Android ecosystem. They are providing the tools, the transparency, and the community engagement that's necessary to keep the power of custom ROMs firmly in our hands. But I want to know what you think about these companies' commitment to open source. Are you still dabbling in custom ROMs? Or does this change your perspective on which phone you might buy next? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And as always, if you found this video insightful, please hit that like button to help the channel out and make sure you are subscribed for more deep dives into the world of Android.